Welcome to the Smart and Soulful Money Podcast. I'm your host, Carrie B. Van Winkle. I'm a socially responsive investment advisor with Natural Investments, and a warm welcome to you. Today, my guest is Catherine Buford. She works with B-Lab and Uh, we're going to have some great conversation. But first, let me introduce you. Dr. Catherine Buford is currently the Director of Inclusive Economies at B-Lab. She's a sociologist committed to translating theory into action. As a scholar, social entrepreneur, and consultant, she has led and consulted on projects for the Embassy of Jamaica, AmeriCorps, BBC, Sony Entertainment, University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign, and various small businesses, creative agencies, nonprofits, and media brands. Her writings and commentary have appeared in publications like BBC, Good, CNBC, and Live Unchained, her former blog of six years for women and creatives across the African diaspora. She holds a PhD in sociology from the University of Maryland, College Park, with concentrations in social theory and social and cultural entrepreneurship. Welcome to the podcast, Dr. Catherine. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you. Um, so let's start with just basic B Corp 101. Tell us what B Lab is and then what is a certified B Corp? Uh, great. And that is an important distinction. There's B Lab and there is a, what a B Corp is. So B Lab is the nonprofit certifying body that certifies businesses based on their level of social and environmental impact. And once someone completes the B Corp certification that our nonprofit issues, they become a certified B Corp. Fantastic. And so what is a certified B Corp? Why does that matter? Yeah, so a certified B Corp is a company that has self-selected to meet very rigorous standards of social and environmental impacts. And it, it matters because the business community really does need to step up for countries around the world to realize their social justice goals. It's not enough for the government to lead change. Uh, It's not enough for grassroots organizations to lead change. For the world to really improve, business needs to be at the table. And our B Corp certification is designed to support companies in not only taking the certification once, getting a certain score, and having this B Corp brand on their packaging, is to support them in continuous improvement so their company continues to meet even more rigorous standards of social and environmental change. Fantastic. And I know that we've seen particularly an example that stands out to me is since the 2016 presidential election, we've seen more and more some of the more higher profile B Corps like Eileen Fisher, Patagonia, Ben and Jerry's really step forward and say it is more important than ever for business to take its share of the responsibility for the world that we want to live in and not depend as much, you know, government is an important part of policy and creating positive change. But yeah, when government fails us, Mm -hmm. businesses can really step up and show, they can show that leadership. Yeah. And one other point I'll make really quickly is, as, as I mentioned, I'm not the lead on our campaign that is called Vote Every Day, but that campaign was intentionally title as such to to say yes in the united states we're gearing up for the 2020 elections in november and that is one way in which we vote but consumers are voting every day with their dollars with which companies they choose to support and so in addition to empowering these business leaders the b corp movement is empowering customers to make political decisions with the companies that they choose to buy from yeah so i think the slogan for that campaign is it's not a dollar it's a ballot And it's so true. Yeah. And that's actually a huge part of what this podcast is about is looking at all the areas of our money life, where we have money flowing in of, into our lives, where we have money going out of our lives and how that is creating positive or negative impact in our life, you know, our beloved's life and our community's life and in the bigger world. So that's so true. So we'll circle back around to that and 
dive into that a little bit more. But before we do that, I'd love for you to tell us more about your specific focus at B-Lab. You're the Director of Inclusive Economies. So tell us what your role is there. Yeah, so my role focuses on the external facing equity, diversity, and inclusion strategy for B-Lab. So I work with B Corp business leaders to realize their internal equity, diversity, and inclusion goals and link those to broader goals in society. So for example, one project that I'm working on right now is supporting B Corp leaders in learning more about and implementing open hiring practices. And open hiring refers to hiring people from chronically unemployed populations. And this in involves hiring systems affected individuals like people who are formerly incarcerated, people who are homeless, survivors of human trafficking. And we would, we would work together to, to think through, okay, what does this mean for, do we continue to have a criminal background check? If we don't do that, who in our leadership do we need to talk to to ensure that we have an equitable hiring practice? And when open hiring is implemented, it supports businesses in addressing broader social problems like the end of mass incarceration, the end of homelessness, the end of human trafficking. And so in addition to having these internal behavior changes, how can our community of certified B Corps engage in broader dialogues to address those bigger social problems where, like I said, we want to see business represented at the table. Okay, so taking a step back, if you have to name it, like, for example, naming inclusive economies, mm -hmm. to me, that implies that the status quo has not been that. So it's been exclusive, to, yeah. to put the simple contrast there. So tell me more about that. And because I think what happens is uh, some of this we recognize more clearly, and then some of this we are fish in water and we, we swim in it every day. And we're not fully recognizing where people are shut out of economies. Yeah. And, so, and I, can, I can go back to that open hiring example. When people are incarcerated and they re return from prison, the most critical factor in whether or not they have a successful reentry is whether or not they have access to quality employment. And this is just a very clear way in which the business community can intervene. When people do not have access to quality employment, they are excluded from the economy. And in general, an inclusive economy is an economy that produces equitable economic outcomes. And by equitable economic outcomes, I mean that everyone, regardless of social identity markers like race, class, or gender, have a fair chance at economic prosperity. And right now, those identity markers like race, class, and gender are absolutely predictors of economic success. Based on your race, you are more or less likely to have access to economic security, economic resilience, and economic well-being. In terms of equity, diversity, and inclusion, that external facing equity, diversity, and inclusion strategy that I'm, I'm leading, I see it as creating an inclusive environment as being foundational to our work. So ensuring that the B Corp community and movement is receptive and inclusive of different perspectives. And diversity is a stop along the way to realizing equitable economic outcomes. So our North Star is equity, as opposed to what I think a lot of people think of when they hear about equity, diversity, and inclusion, they think the focus is just diversity, bringing in diverse bodies and diverse perspectives. That's not our end goal. Our end goal is equity and supporting the B Corp movement and producing those equitable economic outcomes that help us create an inclusive economy. So what's an example of that? What's an example of when it works, we see equity? Yeah, so we, we see equity when we can point to those changes in society. So we can point to a decrease in the recidivism rate. Uh, we can point to a decrease in homelessness. And so that, that is the work that I'm doing right now, with the B Corp leaders to identify how are we going to really deliver on these broader social impact goals. What does your work look like more in the day-to-day? -day? You mentioned working with the B Corp leaders. Are you actually going in to individual companies and working with them at this point? Are you working with a group of leaders? What does that look like right now? Yeah, right now, well, I am about seven months into the role. And it was an inaugural role, so there was like no template or playbook. So I'm still like fleshing it out. And 
right now at, at this early stage, I'm doing sensing, community sensing. So I'm identifying what are the challenges the B Corp leaders have around equity, diversity, and inclusion, and delivering on like this North Star that we all have of creating an inclusive economy. And from this initial sensing, I've identified open hiring as an issue that B Corp leaders want to lead on. So I'll, I'll be working more closely with the B Corp leaders going forward beyond just seeing them as focus groups, which is essentially what I've been doing now, to seeing them as implementation partners. So once I fleshed out our open hiring template and best practices, empowering B Corp leaders to share these practices with other businesses. And also as I flesh out our recruitment strategy and goals to diversify the movement, creating a template and toolkit for other B Corp leaders who want to lead and diversify in the movement to, to like take these slides, to take these talking points and spread the word. Fantastic. You mentioned that your position is a new position at B Lab. What did you call it? Inaugural role. Inaugural. I love that. Yes, an inaugural role. So before a conversation and reading about the work that B Lab was doing internally before they brought you on, can you tell us a little bit about how B Lab is kind of trying to walk its talk? So my role grew out of a challenge called the Inclusive Economy Challenge. So with our B Corp certification. To become a certified B Corp, every company has to answer 200 questions related to social and environmental impact. And out of those 200 questions, 80 questions are related to equity, diversity, and inclusion. And so for the Inclusive Economy Challenge, B Lab encouraged businesses to choose at least three questions out of those 80 questions related to EDI that they wanted to make a concerted effort to lead on. And in leading that challenge, B-Lab really wanted to step up its efforts in participating in the challenge itself and supporting other businesses and leading on equity, diversity, and inclusion. And at that point, they decided three years into hosting the challenge to bring someone on full-time to support with the external facing equity, diversity, and inclusion goals. But additionally, B-Lab decided to hire an internal equity, diversity, and inclusion director. So she and I will be working very closely together. Her name is Alonda Green. Alanda and I will be working closely together to ensure that B-Lab is practicing what it advocates. Again, going back to open hiring, we are thinking through what is our open hiring practice going to be as a nonprofit organization. We're also educating ourselves about mass incarceration and the unique role business has to play. Actually, in a couple of days, I'll be hosting a workshop with a, a facilitator who is an activist who is leading anti-recidivism efforts. And we're gonna talk about this internally at B-Lab. What, what don't we yet know and what do we need to know to really lead these efforts? Fantastic. I am, I'm thinking that I have these follow-up questions, Catherine, that are probably because the work is so new and you're learning so much and then it will unfold, you know, what that looks like as far as actions to take. But yeah, it just seems so important this energy that you're creating, this work that you're doing and helping us as certified B corporations do better and raise the bar and, and be more educated and knowledgeable about where we're not, where we need to raise the bar. What's really inspiring is to talk to certified B Corp business leaders like yourself. And my, my goal and my hope is that this really feels like a position that belongs to the community, that the community helps co-create the outcomes for. Yeah. So speaking of the B Corp community, this may be a little bit of a sensitive question, but I'm, I'm just assuming that most, you know, so many of the B Corp leadership, they're white is my assumption. It's majority white community. And yes. And so with that is part of your role at this point or part of what you all are looking at is to identify businesses that maybe are not yet sort of a B Corps that are led by women or people of color and trying to naturally bring in businesses that are already really fulfilling the mission and heart of what a certified B Corporation is. Yeah, that's, that's a really great question. And definitely, um, we definitely want to bring in more perspectives from business leaders of color who are not yet a part of this movement and really ask what would it take for you to even see this as a movement? 
what would it take for you to want to mobilize this movement and encourage other people to join? Those are some really hard hitting questions that we need to ask. And it raises the need for some really deep conversations that I feel like we're still beginning to have at BLAB. And also, it's just very important to know that when you invite different voices to the table, the conversation at the table will change. And it's about preparing B-Lab internally and the B-Corp community to participate in new conversations. And the reason why I, I said that inclusion is the foundation that we set, as opposed to diversity being that foundation that we set, is we really need to ensure that we're ready to welcome in diverse voices and perspectives and know that diverse groups have different needs and different perspectives and different priorities. And that's why even with this recent decision to place a moratorium on certifying companies with ties to the prison industry, we absolutely came to that decision by thinking through what does it mean for us to certify an industry that disproportionately disadvantages people of color at a time when we say we want this movement to be more diverse. So those are some of the things we're, we're exploring. Now, I didn't get all of that. What's the moratorium on again? We recently we placed a moratorium on certifying companies with ties to the prison industry. The PDF explaining the decision is now live on our website. And we decided to have this pause to think through what are the full implications of B-Lab as a legitimizing body to certify companies with ties to that industry. Ties to the prison industry? Companies that are directly in the prison industry, people who manufacture products for prisons. There are other considerations like companies that provide maybe, that don't have business models that are based on profiting from the prison industry, but maybe 10% of their plastic goods are sold to prisons. That's a nuanced conversation that we need to have. Yeah. I know Wayfair got into some hot water recently when people that, you know, word got out in the media, through the media that they were providing, what, was it the beds or something for some of the detention centers mm -hmm. and, or maybe a lot of them. And yeah, the controversy there that it's not probably a huge part of their overall business model or profit structure, but people don't want to support a company that is profiting off of what's happening. And we have a lot to learn because there's, is, these are very nuanced conversations to have. Yes, of course. Yes. Part of what you all are doing is so much in the world of what we do as socially responsive investment advisors, which is help people navigate such gray areas, gray areas of the economy and our money systems and how we engage in those towards something better. Mm -hmm. But the reality is that is not rainbows and, you know, <laughs> flowers and rainbows. It's you're getting into that real economy and how much do you divest out of certain industries, out of certain businesses, how much do you continue to engage with them, holding them to higher standards, helping them move toward better? And then where can you really, you know, the most exciting too is when you find a company that for us, a big marker is, are they a certified B Corp? And if they are, we have some investments, for example, that are private investments for, so some of our clients that were a good fit for those particular investment, we're able to invest with these certified B Corps, which, you know, are super exciting and fantastic. But so far, a lot of those are private companies, much smaller companies, you know, for example, I've had people ask me about Patagonia, can I invest in Patagonia, you know, and I've had to share with them, well, that's not a publicly traded company. So they're a privately held company. And so it's a bit of a different animal as far as engaging with them in that way. Mm -hmm. So, okay, off track here, but let's get back on track. Tell us more. I'm sure there's more to share. I'd love to hear more about what your focus is in your role right now. There are four main pillars of the inclusive economy's work, impact, recruitment, relevance, and inclusion. And so impact, I would say, is the North Star that we're all working towards, increased positive impact. And that goes back to linking internal behavior change to 
external improve societal outcomes. Recruitment uh, involves recruiting more business leaders from groups that are currently underrepresented in the Bport community. And as we mentioned, it's majority white and male community right now. It's also majority heterosexual, neurotypical, able body, just to name a few. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And relevance means ensuring that this movement feels relevant and accessible to those groups we want to welcome. And that we create a space where these groups feel a sense of shared ownership and commitment of, towards the direction of the movement, where we're headed. And then inclusion involves ensuring that directly impacted individuals are a part of the development and design of any initiatives we have on their behalf. So with this idea of open hiring, we want to ensure that people who are formerly incarcerated take part in the design development of programming or initiatives we have related to open hiring practices. And it would be the same for any initiative we have for any group that is marginalized, people of color, women, people from different underrepresented communities. So impact, recruitment, inclusion. And relevance. And relevance, thank you. Yeah. And so what is that work looking like? Do you have these four different focuses? How is the work unfolding? What is it looking like? Yeah, so for impact right now, the focus would be open hiring. How do we create an open hiring strategy that spreads across a movement, not just within select companies, but feels like a part of the B-Corp community and movement that we're rallying behind. So I'm developing that in partnership with organizations that have been leading in this area and also with certified B-Corps that have already been doing great work in this space. I'm not sure if you're familiar with Grayson Bakery, but they have an yes. open hiring model that is very inspiring that we want to socialize across the community. Can you tell us more about that company for people who haven't heard of them? Grayson Bakery is a company that actually it works in, in collaboration with a well-known certified B Corp, Ben & Jerry's. So if you have a proclivity for Ben and Jerry's, I think it's the fudge brownie ice cream or the cookie dough ice cream. You have tasted Grayson Bakery's products because Grayson Bakery provides all of the baked goods for Ben and Jerry's ice cream. And they hire people who are systems affected, people who are formerly incarcerated, people who are homeless, who would otherwise be very challenged getting employment. And they do this without performing any criminal background checks. To get a job at Grayson Bakery, all you do is fill fill out an application And then I do believe it's within two weeks, even you're put on online, you're put to work. You go through a training program. Grayson also provides some additional supports and that's you, you, you have employment and he to their approach is a philosophy of radical non-judgment. And I'm also learning more about their model, the different aspects of it and how they support other companies and, developing open hiring practices. So I'm really excited to work with them. They are fantastic. I was excited to see their brownies in Mm -hmm. a local grocery store. And I got to hear their, I guess he's their, I don't know what his official title is, but their CEO talk about Mm -hmm. the company. And it seems, if I'm remembering correctly, it seems like if someone comes to them asking for a job, they hire them. Mm -hmm. That's how it works. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's not even about, we have five positions open. And I, and I would say in, in terms of open hiring, they are pretty extreme. Not every company needs to have a model that's like Grace and Bakery. Yes. In terms of, of my work, it involves like addressing some of these misconceptions about open hiring. Like there's only one way to do it and it's only for certain companies. But if you're, a, let's say, a media company, you could never have a model like Grace and Bakery. That's like, a, that's a misconception that I'll be addressing through my work. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. So we'll put the link in the show notes for people who want to learn more about Grayston Bakery. And so you can look for their products Mm -hmm. and you can also just know about this great model that exists. The solutions are there, you know, (laughs) and so it's grayston.org. But yeah, we'll put the, the link for people to access that easily. So that's some impact focus. That's an impact example. So, and then when it comes to recruitment, I'll be working with business leaders already in our B Corp community who have a stated commitment to equity, diversity, and inclusion, and also business leaders of color who have done this work and understand the unique needs and perspectives of different groups that are underrepresented to flesh out a recruitment strategy. 
So that's another focus is what will the recruitment strategy involve? And then when it comes to relevance, doing community sensing with business leaders that are currently underrepresented to see why weren't you here before? And what would it take, as I mentioned, for you to feel like not only a part of to not only become a certified B Corp, but to join this community and movement. One thing that really inspires me about B Lab is we do not want a transactional relationship with certified B Corps. The idea is that we're not just selling a brand or just a logo that you can put on your marketing. We want people to feel like they're part of a community and are advancing the idea of business as a force for good. And of course, when it comes to defining what does it mean for business to be a force for good, like I said, people from different backgrounds have different perspectives on what that means and looks like. And then when it comes to inclusion, that is just going to be continuing to be in dialogue with groups that are underrepresented to ensure that they are, are have a touch point around all of the strategies and events and programming that we want to launch. So what have you been surprised by so far? One pleasant surprise, I would say, internally is a model of self-management that was new to me. B-Lab definitely has an ownership culture. Different employees within B-Lab all have ownership of their work. So yes, we have dependencies and accountabilities, but it's up for me to decide what I'm working on when. And I have a say in when deliverables will be met, if the scope of my work needs to expand or shrink. I have a say, of that, say in that. And I was really yeah, pleasantly surprised to see B-Lab really leaning into this model. Another surprise I would say is how savvy so many B Corp community leaders are when it comes to equity, diversity, and inclusion. There are, I think, a range of not only perspectives, but people just being at different stages on their learning journey. There are people who, would actually, like, who I would say are perhaps equity, diversity, and inclusion 101. And there are people who are equity, diversity, and inclusion 401. And some people in that, that 401 camp really want to see us moving forward. And there are people in the 101 camp who are like, I, I still have a lot to learn, but I'm open and receptive. So it was, it was really encouraging to see those people in that 401 camp really supporting me and wanting to see this work advance and go forward. What does the next year look like? How do you expect that it may unfold. I know you're covering new territory here. You know, you're learning so much, I'm sure, and catalyzing conversations that have not, not been had yet. So I know it's only a guess, but where do you see things going from here? Yeah, it's a really great question. I was really excited when I came into my role for Champions Retreat. I started in February and Champions Retreat was just last month in September. And I, I said, Champions Retreat is going to be my anchor point. It's going to be the point by which I have a lot of things in place that I'm able to share with the B Corp community. And I think our upcoming Champions Retreat in 2021 will be that next anchor point because what I really would like to see for that Champions Retreat is for it to look a lot different than this Champions Retreat. As, as you mentioned, it is a majority white movement. Champions Retreat was a majority white space. At this year's Champions Retreat, I was really excited to have some workshops related to realizing equity, diversity, and inclusion goals, like addressing mass incarceration, addressing human trafficking, and opportunity zones. And those were really well received, which is really inspiring to me. I'd like to work more closely with B Corp community leaders to see what are the social impact goals that are important to them. In addition to working more closely with B Corp leaders of color and other groups that are currently underrepresented to identify what are the impact goals that are relevant to you and seeing those at that next Champions Retreat represent a really meaningful way and seeing B Corp leaders engaging in like hard hitting dialogue and around those, those ideas. So my hope is that we will have made some progress around some of these issues by that next Champions Retreat and, it's going, and it would be a, a very diverse event and representing like diverse perspectives around social change. Fantastic. And I, my guess is then you, you know, you don't wait until that next retreat to have some of that critical dialogue, but that you're doing that along the way, evolving the dialogue along the way, or the dialogues evol evolving so that you have people who can then come into that space who are more better equipped mm -hmm. to then help the dialogues happen there in a productive, rich way. 
Right. So yeah, we, we will have set that foundation. That's great. So big picture again with certified B Corps. We, we definitely have talked about how certified B Corps are helping evolve the purpose and behavior of business. But I'd love for you to share a couple more examples of how you've seen certified B Corps really taking leadership and evolving the purpose and behavior of business. I also really like this question. So I did take some notes. I came a bit prepared for this, if that's okay. Fantastic. So I wanted to talk about the movement as an aggregate and what really inspires me about the B Corp movement is that basically B Corps outperform businesses that are not certified B Corps on various issues, especially related to my work, equity, diversity, and inclusion. So certified B Corps are 56% more likely to have majority women workers than other businesses. Certified B Corps are 90% more likely to have transgender inclusive healthcare coverage than businesses that are not certified B Corps. Uh, certified B Corps are 98% more likely to hire workers from chronically unemployed populations. So those are just a few examples of the work that, that certified B Corps do. And again, as I mentioned, our impact assessment is designed to support companies in continuous improvement along measures like these. Every company that has contributed to these statistics is still working hard in these areas. You mentioned Grayston Bakery as a, a specific business example. Can you give us a specific business example that you know of where they've put that into practice? One business, I would say Anamiki, is a certified B Corp based in Canada, and it provides technology skills training to indigenous groups. And their business model is all about empowering indigenous communities. So how do you spell that? It's A-N-I-M-I-I-K-I-I. -I -I -I. One thing that's just really inspiring is that is a model that I've seen so many business leaders of color use. Like every other certified B Corp, the bottom line is not the end all be all. It's about creating social change through your business. As I mentioned, like in my research, I've seen uh, business leaders of color prioritize community uplift in their business model design. Mm -hmm. A certified B Corp that absolutely does that is Sundial Brands. It's the largest certified B Corp that's black owned. Sundial Brands owns Shea Moisture and they recently acquired Essence Magazine. So where Sundial Brands was leading in the Better For You cosmetics products, they filled a gap where communities of color were, were marketed to by brands like Vaseline or Jergens or the standard products that weren't or certified organic, that were not actually delivering on for some of these companies on their commitment to being fair trade suppliers. But Sundial Brands is really stepping up in that way. And again, it wasn't just about profiting from creating these products. It was serving an underrepresented community or serving underrepresented communities. And also one thing that's been really inspiring in working with Sundial Brands is they have said in, in being committed to serving these communities, we have to stay laser focused on the social problems that disproportionately impact these communities. And it's, a, it's another certified B Corp that is, a, is really I'm keen on engaging in dialogues that affect the communities that they serve for profit. Are you aware of an example that you could share in their work in that area? So Sundial Brands has started a fund called New Voices Fund, where they provide business development training exclusively to women entrepreneurs of color. They identified a major need in the market. My dissertation focus as a sociologist was the experience of Black women social entrepreneurs and how they were redefining success. So that was, that was an example that really resonated with me because I know that this is a group of entrepreneurs that represents the fastest growing group of entrepreneurs in the country, but also the most under-resourced. And so Sundial Brands stepped up and addressed that very practical, timely need. This is really just showing how 
these critical roles that a business can play in creating like this web of impact in Sundial Brands, it just sounds like is such a great example of that where they're better serving a market that needed to be better served, that needs to be better served with products that are actually, it sounds like maybe healthier, you know, and more ethically sourced. And also then to take some of that profit and create this fund that will then create even more ripple effects, positive ripple effects. I know that that is a, what certified B Corps have committed to is a portion of their profits being donated or put to work in more of a, what we think of maybe as a charitable way to create impact, additional impact in addition to the focus of their actual business mission. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I have a, a framework. It's called Empower Your Money for Good Framework. And it shows the different areas. I mentioned it a, a little bit earlier. It shows the different areas of our money life and then how money can come in and go out and reflect values in those different areas. So one of them is how we bring in income, what our work is in the world, and then of course investing, how we're investing, specific to the way I help with socially responsive investing. It's where we bank, what credit card we use, if we use one. Of course charitable donations is one, philanthropy, and then there's this really big one of what we buy. And it was really fun thinking about all the ways we can connect these different areas to certified B Corps. So I mentioned investing is one earlier. And then, um, but this, you know, like I said, this big one of what we buy. And some of the examples you gave from buying personal care product from Sundial Brands or buying a brownie from Grayson Bakeries, all of the different ways that we make choices every day with our dollars, going back to that idea, the campaign that, that you all have really promoted of, of voting with your dollars and voting for more of what we want to see. And rather than just blindly like spending our money, you know, with no idea about how it's creating impact. And I, I think we're starting to gain more awareness. There's a bit more transparency. There's a bit more education. There's a bit more conversation about it, but there's, we've still got a long way to go. Is there anything else you want to say, especially about that, what you buy, how you spend money area of our money life? I can say I, I hadn't heard of that concept of money life, but I really think that's spot on. I, I really liked hearing that idea because we talk about like our spiritual life and I do think our money life really captures like this is a life that we're living when we, yeah, when we spend money and what we choose to spend it on. Yeah, I'm just, I, I'm really excited to like talk about like the different aspects of it. Um, and it, it did make me think about this B Corp movement is really a lifestyle for people. And I'm, I'm just really happy that it's helping people to lead more healthy, I think, money lives. Yes. The way I talk about it is we can't expect perfection. We only can create change through imperfect action, moving forward, moving, you know, with our best efforts just to try to move forward in the way we know how. But I think if we expect perfection, then we get paralyzed, we get overwhelmed, you know, I get stuck in analysis paralysis, you know, and I think other people do too. Yeah, so just really giving ourselves permission to figure out one step, one way that we can, we, f we feel even excited to move forward and um, make changes. So how have you been impacted personally by working at B-Lab and kind of being immersed in the the B Corp community, how has that changed your views on anything or the actions that you're taking? Well, one thing I would say is I feel like this is such emotionally charged work. I, I see a lot of people giving their all to this work. And one thing that it's, it's made me think of is like, how will I create more healthy boundaries around my work life and my personal life, knowing that they intersect. And even when I'm not at work, 
like work is on my mind because I'm spending money <laughs> all the time. And I am a lot more mindful of the, the brands I buy from now that I, I work at B Lab. Even though B Lab had been on my radar and I knew what that certified B Corp meant, I didn't really appreciate the fact that people sat at a computer for a very long time to answer some very hard questions about their social and environmental impact to get this, uh, this, get this certification. So I do, I do make a concerted effort to buy from certified B Corps. Yes, and that is the challenge of doing a job that you have such a commitment to and have such a passion for the the mission for sure is that healthy balance and like you said especially when it's work that really can permeate you know your day-to-day life in in that distinct way that this one does i would say to your point about you can only create change through imperfect actions i make mistakes i make mistakes when it comes to equity diversity and inclusion i make mistakes when it comes to purchasing i i, I still make mistakes but i know i'm on this journey yeah Definitely. It's been fun. I have started, you know, I notice when I've already bought something that from a company that's certified B Corp and I'll take it out of the cabinet and be like, oh yeah, this is, you know, this company is certified B Corp, my tea that I drink every morning or whatever that is and the chocolate that I buy or whatever that might be. And so I've, I've started pointing it out to my husband and now he's starting to notice and not only what we already have in the house, but then when we're making decisions about, you know, buying something, it's exciting for us to just see more and more companies showing that commitment, that type of commitment, that level of commitment. Is there anything else, Catherine, that we haven't talked about yet that you think is important to put a spotlight on or share that you'd like to share? Well, I'm really excited for the conversation I think we're going to start having going forward. I think the the conversation is going to focus more to economic justice and economic liberation for groups that have been systemically oppressed. And I'm, I'm really looking forward to how our team at B Lab and the B Corp community engages in those dialogues. I think it's becoming, it's becoming more and more pressing and important to underrepresented groups to see businesses really put their money where their impact is, if you will, and not only have like practices around better business models, more ethical business practices, but stepping up in dialogues that affect these communities and being able to engage in those dialogues, even if imperfectly, but coming from a place of sincerity and willingness to learn. So I'm I'm really excited to see B-Lab show up as a thought leader. Yes, fantastic. And with you in that role there, I am also excited to just follow your work and how you're helping B-Lab deepen and broaden the conversations and what that's going to look like at the 2021 Champions Retreat in Mexico. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for your time. I know you are very busy and just really appreciate all you've had to share with us. Well, thank you. I really appreciate it. It was great speaking with you.